The greatest power you possess is your ability to choose. Join Lowe's more as he reveals how you can begin to maximize that power by exploring yourself on the deepest levels and committing to making lasting and positive changes. Get ready to achieve breakthroughs that will lead to accelerated growth and transformation because you are now tuned in to The Blueprint. Good evening. This is Lowe's Moore, and I want to welcome you back to The Blueprint Podcast. And, hey, I'm excited to be back. I'm, I'm really excited. This is, this is, um, uh, you know, I was just talking to my guest for this evening. We were having a little conversation before the show. And this is without a doubt, my favorite time of the year. Uh, Thanksgiving. Um, I want to say happy Thanksgiving to, to every, you know, Thanksgiving is more than is ev- really Thanksgiving is every day, but the celebration of it, you know, we start on Thursday, we go to Friday, uh, into Saturday, and really it's a four day, it's a four day event, uh, Thanksgiving. So I want to wish everybody a happy Thanksgiving. I hope you had a wonderful one. Right. And, you know, I was, uh, you know, I was sharing it, you know, th- this time of the season, right. Uh, yeah, it's a happy one. It's a happy occasion, but Life, uh, you know, has presented its challenges in the season. Um, you know, our Thanksgiving 10 years ago uh, and how we celebrated it was so different 10 years ago. And, you know, we, we, we've lost some loved ones over the years and, and, and we've had Thanksgiving, you know, at different places but we move on because the power of Thanksgiving is in the power of family. And, and whether your family uh, is here, like for me here in Mount Vernon, uh, family is also, you know, my, my, my brothers are in, in North Carolina, you know, and we find that our families are, are, are spread out all over the place, but, Man, I know that some place, wherever they are, right, wherever they are, they're celebrating as a family and they're celebrating Thanksgiving and they're thanking God, you know, that they're able to come together as a family and celebrate family and celebrate this life, this amazing life that we have. So um, I want to again say happy Thanksgiving. And welcome to the season, right? We are, it's, we're in the season of giving, all right? We're in the season of love. You know, I, I hope that, you know, from Thanksgiving into Christmas, into the new year, that the theme of love will carry over all this Thanksgiving, all this giving, and this giving season will, will, be, will, will transition right over into the new year. I, I think it does. I think for the first three, um, the first three months or so, man, I think we're still in the season. Everybody's happy and giving and loving, you know, Hey, I said, don't let it in, right. Keep it up 12 months out of the year, be giving, be happy. So let's, let's get into this thing. I'm going to drop my, this is my, my pebble, even though it's my little basketball. I'm dropping my pebble in the pond because I'm expecting a ripple effect, right? Uh, you know, let me, let me say this about this ripple effect, right? About the pebble, right? You can throw all kinds of things in the, you you know, you can throw fear, right? You can throw fear in as a pebble, it, you know, it's just, it's, you know, not a figure of speech, but it's an image. It's a thought process, right? And when you p- drop a pebble in the pond, it says you get a ripple effect. Right. It depends on what you drop in there, because sometimes we're talking about our own personal ponds. Right. So if you if you drop fear in there somewhere along the line, the ripple effect is going to be fear. Right. But if you drop faith in 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 that seed of faith in there, that pebble of faith in there somewhere along the line, faith shows up. 
right? If you if you drop love in there, somewhere along the line, love will show up, right? If you drop hate in there, somewhere along the line, right, the ripple effect will be hatred, right? And 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 so make sure when you drop your pebble in the palm, when you wake up in the morning, right, as you lay down at night, that you drop love and you drop faith and you drop goodness. You drop all those things as you go to sleep, right? Because the ripple effect when you wake up in the morning is going to be those things. So again, happy Thanksgiving and let's get rolling. Um, Let me start off with the book of the week. Yeah, let me jump right in here. My book of the week. Hey, my good friend, Gerald Hoover, right? Has done it again, right? Gerald, you know, uh, he has my heroes uh, series, and he's added to that series. A basketball hero hero is born. Um, I didn't get a chance to read it; that just came out. Um, I'm waiting to get my copy, and I'm looking forward to reading it. Uh, he's got a little animation here. Look, looks like he's a, uh, you know, uh, you know, presenting something that uh, elementary school could get into. I like it, right? Uh, I like it. And if you haven't seen this series, check out Gerald Hoover, right? Check out Gerald Hoover and um, good friend, Mom Vernon, author, journalist. Check out his book. I'm looking forward to getting it, right? And here, here's the word of the week. And you know, I've been in the series of the fruit of the spirit, right? And I've gone through love and joy and peace. And now... I'm in kindness, right? Um, you know, kindness is a, a very powerful word, right? And it takes a whole lot of, it, it takes a whole lot sometimes to be kind, especially when people talk about you or people don't treat you right, right? You still need to be, you need to still show some kindness. I mean, these fruit of the spirit, these words are so powerful, right? And as you know, uh, love is Inside love is all these things. You know, we can say love and out of the attributes of love gives off love, joy, peace, and kindness. One of the things I say in my morning prayer every every morning, I, I say every morning, I said, Lord, help me today to manifest the fruit of the spirit. Right. I don't say, you know, I think that's important is you can say the fruit of the spirit. You could say those words, but if you can't live those words, right, if you can't manifest those words, um, you, you know, the results that you will get from manifesting the fruit of the spirit and particularly kindness, man, there's such a reward when you're kind to people. And, and then here's my Hill Harper, Pierce Harper affirmation quote moment. Right. I like this one a lot. You know, I like I like it a whole lot. It said leaders don't force people to follow. They invite them on the journey. Right. I like it. You know, little, little guy going along and little ducks following behind. Right. I love that, man. Leaders don't force people to follow. They invite them on the journey. I like that. That's the the affirmation and quote for this. For today and and then here's my my music right and here's my movie of the week i mean i was just listening to to it too it, it, it came it came to mind when i was thinking about the the music of the week uh the movie right there called happy feet the animation movie uh with the penguins and i love that one scene and actually um my grandson, I, you know, I thought about this when I was thinking about my grandson, uh, Dakota, um, because when you put this, you put this movie on, you have to go, you know, straight to this, to this one part in the movie where they're tap dancing, the penguins are tap dancing and it's yeah, tap dancing to Boogie Wonderland, right? That's, that's the music for this week, Boogie Wonderland. And they tap dance into it and he gets such joy you know, out of watching, um, that's right, Mike, pop, pop. Yeah. 
you know, he gets such joy at watching the penguin do the little tap dance and, and dance into the, to the song. So, but that's my, my music of the week. Boogie Wonderland from the animation movie, uh, happy feet. And then here's my movies of the week, right? Um, you know, uh, two of my favorite basketball players, uh, Michael Jordan and LeBron James. We got Space Jam. We got both Space Jams here. Um, yeah, it, you know it's always good when 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 athletes, right, or entertainers, you know, show show their versatility. You know, uh, when they show that they're versatile, and uh, and 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 like Michael Jordan getting out his box. Right. Getting out his box and 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 trying and, and, and trying acting. Same thing with LeBron James as well. I think they did a great job, man, in 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 doing it. And Michael Jordan has a book out. I don't know if you guys have ever read it before. It said the name of the book is I Can't Accept Not Trying. Right. Uh, you will never know how good you are unless you try. Right. Everybody was mad at Michael Jordan when he left basketball he retired from basketball and he went into baseball they just thought he was crazy you know but michael was like look you know my father always wanted me to try baseball right and i wasn't afraid to try right and i love it you know hey if there's something out there that you want you want to try go ahead and try it right go 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 ahead and try it don't let nobody say you can't do that or why are you doing that? No, this is your life, right? You get this one life, right? And you get to try whatever you want to try. So uh, those are my two movies right there, Space Jam. And then, hey, let's throw these celebrations out here real quick. Uh, I got some birthday celebrations. We'll say happy birthday to Lincoln. You know, that's my my oldest sister's uh my niece tt these are my great nieces i got great nieces great nieces and nephews and i want to say happy birthday to lincoln man you know uh, i think it happened a few days ago uh and but i want to say happy birthday and then man this is called broke vember my wife calls it broke vember there's a lot of birthdays in november and then on the sixth carter Happy birthday, Carter. You down in Pennsylvania. Happy birthday, man. What's up? Turned six years old. I seen him the other day. It was great seeing him, man. He get nice, nice and tall. Love it. Right. And then Cammy. Cammy's three. Oh my God. Look at that. How did that happen? Look at that pretty face. Oh my God. Three already. Wow. Happy birthday, Cammy. Love you, miss you. All right. Yeah. I don't think I think we had about, I don't know, it seemed like we had about 10, 15 birthdays in November. But uh let's get rolling here. I got something special here. I want to add for 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 the rest of this holiday season. I've been trying to get this in, right? And my guests kind of sparked something inside of me that I wanted to do it. And you know, uh, I know, like, I like, I like giving gifts, but I like giving, I like getting gifts too. Right. And, and I think most of us like getting gifts, you know, I'm really excited also to give them. And, you know, this series, as we go into from Thanksgiving into this Christmas season, I want to call these each week. I'm going to do something on paying it forward or acts of kindness, right? Here's a perfect example. My, my son-in-law, Steve, you know, uh, all my daughter always says that when they go to Dunkin' Donuts, he always pays for the person behind them, right? And it, you know what? It, it can start a, a chain reaction because if you pay for somebody behind you, and see, this goes with the word kindness, Right. When you pay for the person behind you. Right. And then the person behind that person pays for the person behind them and you get a chain reaction. Next thing you know, everybody is showing kindness. 
right? And we have to, in our world today, we got to learn to build habits like this because only these types of habits and kindness can change culture. And God knows we need to be changing culture right now. And we can't change culture without the fruit of the spirit, without kindness, without love. We can't change it. You know, so I want to salute Steve um, on, you know, his act of kindness, his paying it forward. Right. And then my good friend, uh, Joey Holland, uh, he's a, a business owner, owns several, I think, five, six car dealerships uh, in West Virginia, you know, doing well for him and his family. But every Sunday morning when you go to his church in Charleston, West Virginia, you know what Joey's doing? He's not sitting proud in a seat saying, I'm a business owner, right? I don't have to, you know, serve anybody. You know, you know what Joey's doing? He's standing at the door of the church as an usher welcoming people in. Now, those are powerful pay, paying it forward and acts of kindness. So I want to show you this video. Hey, hey, hey hang in there with me because I'm going to get to my guests in a minute. Right. But I want to show you this. Uh, this the dar man says share it. So I wanted to share this and remember the series for moving forward in this season is paying it forward. Next. Okay. Total is fourteen eighty seven. This is six dollars and twelve cents. I said fourteen eighty seven. Thought I had more. Let me see. This is all I have. Then you'll have to put something back. You can take the mail off. Look, oh, could you hurry up, please? I don't have all day, buddy. I'm really sorry. Daddy, is something wrong? No, sweetie, everything's okay. Total's now 12.86. You still don't have enough. Listen, you can take the cake out. Daddy, no! It's for Grandpa's birthday. He's been really sad. Just the worst. I know, right? It's sweaty. It's gonna be okay. But Grandpa has been so sad lately. And the cake would have made him so happy. Excuse me? I, I, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to startle you. I just saw what happened back there and... I thought that maybe I could help. So please, take this. <laughs> wow, man. Um, thank you. But, but why are you doing this? You don't even know us. Well, I don't know what it's like to not have enough. You see, when I was a young boy, my mother and I were homeless and we barely had enough money to eat. We went to the grocery store and when my mom got to the cashier, she didn't have enough money to pay. We left the store empty handed not knowing how we were going to eat that night. But then out of nowhere, an amazing man bought us some food. We didn't know how we would ever repay him. But he gave us this card and said the only thing we needed was to one day help someone else in need. So you see, I'll never forget that kind man. He thought he was just giving me food, but he gave me so much more than that. 
a life lesson I'll never forget. He made such a big difference in my life, and I'll probably never know. Wow, man. That's a beautiful story. My grandpa's gonna be so happy. Here, take this. And just always remember to pay it forward and help someone else in need. I will. Thank you, mister. Hey, Dad. We got something for you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Dad. Happy birthday to you. This is lovely. My favorite cake. Grandpa, why are you crying? It's nothing, sweetie. I'm fine. Please, Dad. Just, just tell us what's wrong. It's just that I turned 76 years old today. And lately, I can't help but wonder, has my life had any purpose? Have I made any difference in this world? Please. Don't talk like that. It's like, today is your birthday and we want to celebrate that. Okay. I'm sorry. Let's do that. But son, how could you afford to buy this cake? I know things have been hard. Just be honest. I didn't have any money. But... And there was this man who, he bought everything for us. And the only thing he asked us to do in return was to do it for someone else in the future. He even gave us his card. He said that someone gave it to him when he was little. Is everything okay? Oh, it's nothing. I just realized that my life did make a difference. Now, who wants the first piece? Me. <laughs> uh, no, me. Uh, excuse me. Dad, I'm your I child. I'm your Only I'm way you have a grandchild is because of me. Hey Darman fam, I hope you love that message about how the kindness you put out into the world always finds a way of coming back to you. I appreciate you watching and remember, we're not just telling stories, we're changing lives. And when you share my videos, you're helping to change lives too. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Awesome, awesome. I want to welcome before I um, I want to welcome Caitlin Gleason. Good evening. Yeah, because you you good evening. So you inspired all this. I was, <laughs> I was reading your information. So and I had already I had already um, put on the on my outline that I wanted to do something around acts of kindness. So when I was reading your information and it said. Your motto, personal motto was pay it forward. I was like, oh, let me let me look up something. So what, what, what's, what's your thoughts? And welcome to the blueprint. Thank you. I, you know, <laughs> to inspire you is very flattering because, <laughs> uh, you know, you're somebody in the community that inspires others. You're a success story. So for me to even be on this show with the paying it forward, 
is is emotional for me because that's something I truly believe in. And some, even that video got me emotional. <laughs> <laughs> it really did because people don't know when you show somebody kindness or even just speak to them and say good morning to them, you have no idea. You might be the only person that they speak to for the whole day or maybe even a week or a month. So any act of kindness doesn't have to be a monetary act. It could be just a gesture, like you said, and that changes the culture. Mm -hmm. And, you know, my influence behind paying it forward really, well, I mean, my parents always taught us to give back. You know, we were very blessed. I mean, we had the struggles that any other family had. My mother stayed home. She raised us. My father took full financial uh responsibility for his mother-in-law and then she lived with us then my grandmother so we were always taking care of people for my brother's friends my sister's friends if somebody had nowhere to stay they always had a bedroom in our house uh but i think the most influence i had in paying it forward had to be my sister muffin hmm. so my sister was diagnosed with breast cancer at 37 years old. But what she did between 37 and 42 was truly amazing because she she took her illness and turned it into something positive for somebody else. Hmm. And she raised hundreds of thousands of dollars for the American Cancer Society. And before she passed away, she said, you know, I'm raising all this money for this big organization Make sure in the future that you do things more locally so you can see what your good, you know, your good intentions, you can see the results of them. Hmm. And I always think it's really important when you give to other people, you give it unconditionally. You don't give it to create a scorecard. You don't give it to get it back in return. And you give it anonymously. And you give it anonymously so that you can enjoy the fruits of that kindness. Mm. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, man. I'm the, yeah, I mean, you got you hold on. <laughs> no, we're gonna all get emotional on here tonight. Uh, sorry. Yeah. I do. No, no, is that the, is it is that it's the season. It is, you know, and I, I think we all long for this kind of mindset as we move forward. You know, this kind of mindset in our homes, in our cities, uh, in, in the United States, around the world. We, we, I think we all are looking for this, you know, this, this kind of uh, resurgence of love Absolutely. and kindness. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's just awesome. And, um, I, you know, Mr. Jones, uh, uh, Jimmy Jones at the Boys and Girls Club when I was a little kid, he used to always, um, you know, uh-oh. We That's got my sister. <laughs> awesome. 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 Yeah. That, that was a powerful, uh, you know, that was a powerful gesture in regards to, you know, you hearing some bad news and turning that bad news into good news. I mean, yeah, that's. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I, you know, I could get upset that my sister's not around for certain memories, but she's created such a legacy for, well, I, you know, I'm, I'm very big on uh, empowering young women. And I think that that comes from having a very strong mother. Also watching uh, my mother-in-law struggle through illness herself, but being a badass. I don't know how else to explain <laughs> her or my mom. They were both very, very different people, but very strong women. And even my husband's grandmother came, came into Canada, loses her husband, has three girls to raise goes to Canada and amasses this just incredible, you know, I like to call it a dynasty really because she was able to support all three of her children, you know, mm -hmm. and, and leave things behind to, to carry on for future generations. Right. Mm -hmm. And we're always, we always talk about generational wealth, right. That's you know, right. how, how to, how to be able to create that. And people don't realize you don't have to have anything to create gener generational wealth. You have to have a will to survive, a positive mental outlook, and no distractions. Mm. Once you let distractors in, you're never going to succeed.
And I think that that's why, you know, it's, it's so important. I remember when, uh, by the way, Heavy D's uh, mother, Eulalie uh, Myers, told me to tell you, hello, Lowe's. <laughs> well, tell, I, remember, I, tell I, I said hello. I will. I remember when we were at um, Heavy D's funeral, uh, Reverend Al Sharpton got up, and, and I'm paraphrasing this. He said, you know, what, what is it between the time that you're born and the time that you die, okay? What will they say about you? And I, I never forget that. That stuck so, that struck me so hard that day because when my father passed away, I read this, um, this poem, The Dash, right? And it's all about the dash in between from 1972 to the day I die, that dash. What does that mean, that dash? Are you going to be proud with what was in between those years? And that, that really, that really digs very deep for me. I really believe in that. And I believe in, in uplifting people. Hmm. And you, the only way to do that is through kindness. Now, I'm not perfect. Everybody has <laughs> those, th those days where you're just like, oh, I don't know, the devil came in, but <laughs> you know, you got to rise above it, you know, because you, you can't succeed unless, unless you have a positive mental outlook. Oh yeah. Yeah. That, I mean, I, two other things that, well, stuck out when I was reading your information, going over your information and, and that I know of you, uh, civil engagement and community is very powerful. And I, and I think we've lost, I mean, you, you're a city council member, yeah. right? And that was one of the things in regards to, uh, and of course you're a real good friend of my wife <laughs> and, you know, I hear we talk all the time about the city of Mount Vernon and we kind of knew uh, with your team what we were getting. You know, I thought that we were getting people who really who cared about community and civil engagement Absolutely. And, and community service because we're servants uh, if we're regardless whether we're the mayor or city council or we work for the recreation department, which I worked for the recreation department back in the day, right? That we are public servants, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? We serve the community. And um, that's why when, when you guys won, I was I'm very happy because I said, Oh, we, we have people in who who's in there who wants to serve the community, not be served, <laughs> right, right. Uh, but they want to serve the community. They know what this is all about. I mean, in spite that you may give you, you know, you may get a little resources, or if you if you work for the the city, you're gonna get paid because you work for the city and stuff like that. But more importantly, more than the money, right? More than the, and it ain't a whole lot of money. I mean, when you when you work for your community, it's not a whole lot of money. You you're not getting rich. Right? No, and you know what, you end up <laughs> You end up giving giving most of your salary away to to community organizations that that need a leg up or a help up. So it's it's you know it's not for me and and our, our team. I would say our team because it's not just Ed Danielle and myself. It's Ed Danielle, uh, myself, Lisa Copeland, Derek Thompson. All of us are about the community. And, and what we wanted. And I'm not saying that past administrations weren't about the community. I think that um, the more recent administrations, I, I felt the worst for because they, they were never able to get where they needed to go because of so many distractors, right? And so many mm -hmm. distractions. So we're starting from the bottom up, right? And how, you, how do you start from the bottom up? You talk to people, you find out what they need. You find you you use the resources that, that you have in the position that you have to help as many people as you possibly can. That's right. That's yeah. really what it's about. I mean, we're not here like nobody's making a million dollars here, right? Yeah. What we're trying to do is make sure that we're fiscally responsible, but we also want to make sure that with the with the tax money that we collect, that we're making sure that everybody is taken care of in whatever capacity they need. And it's even like, just to give you an example, 
soup kitchen moved from the armory, which was always going to be a temporary space for us. Uh, mm. for, so I serve as the president of the board of community service associates for those who are listening, who um, don't know that. And that's the largest soup kitchen here in the city of Mount Vernon. So we went from the armory, maybe at the end of the month, we always had a max capacity, probably 50 to 60 people moving across the, the, the train tracks into a church generations, which is where we had originated on um, uh, Fifth Avenue at Sacred Heart Church, right? Mm -hmm. Now we move over to Generations Church with uh, Pastor uh, Bajoy Samuels, who's been unbelievable for us, right? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and I love being in a faith-based environment because they understand our mission. Not that the city didn't, but you know, there's only so much the city could do to help you, right? right. So being in a faith-based environment, we're able to do so much more and help so many more people that I think um, a couple of weeks ago, we were up to 90 dinners. Mm. And that, I don't even remember doing that at um, Sacred Heart, but that's also uh, an example of the times that we're in, like what we spoke to before we got on the podcast. Everything is increasing, costs are increasing across the board. Mm -hmm. And to be able to help people who, who are hungry, being homeless is completely different than being hungry, right? It's That's two right. Different, different social issues, okay? Being homeless, you, you don't have a place to lay your head. Being hungry, you might have an apartment. And I tell this story all the time. I know a woman that comes into the soup kitchen, her and her son, she works really hard. She just can't put groceries on the table. Mm. So she comes to the soup kitchen. We don't take your social services number. We don't take any information except your name because we have to justify it if we get any federal grants that we're actually serving the people, right? And it doesn't matter if you Mount Vernon Yonkers or what have you, but the 90 people that have been coming into the soup kitchen are Mount Vernon people. And they're just like you and I, Lowe's. They mm. just put the groceries on the table. So there's a real need to, to when you say be kind, there's a real need to be kind. Those people don't need to, to be embarrassed by anything. And maybe they haven't talked to anybody, like I said at the beginning. You know, some some people, that might be the only conversation they have for the day. Yeah. And it's, it, 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 it's a real, real problem now with low prices increasing. You know, I, I went to the supermarket tonight, I, $12 <laughs> for, for chicken cutlet. I was like, oh, my goodness, you know? Yeah. You know, I was at uh, Costco's, right? And my, my wife loves this, uh, I guess it's this popcorn, this air popcorn. Or, you know, I guess it's supposed to be good for you or, or whatever it is. But I always get her a box of it, right? Mm -hmm. And the box was $9, right? To, you know, get a box with 28 bags of popcorn. Mm -hmm. he supposedly healthy popcorn. But, uh, you know. <laughs> But, you know, I know she loves it. So the day I go into Costco's and I look, I'm looking for it and I find the box like, oh, it's nineteen dollars a box. <laughs> wow. I was like, what? Yeah. Oh, man. I love my wife. I'm going to get this popcorn. <laughs> you know, I was like, but how to take care of Patrice. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Without a doubt. And, and you know, and that. Yeah. I mean, that's sad that you know, people need, and then yet the prices keep going up yeah. and, um, and you're, you're in good, uh, good company, you know, with, uh, past the B joy is a, is a part of <laughs> my wife. She said the next time we leave popcorn at Costco. <laughs> <laughs> I saw, was it Rudy? I saw Ruby. I thought I saw Ruby. Yeah, Ruby. That's my, yeah. my high school girlfriend. Shout out to Ruby. Ruby called me the other day. And just to tell you a, 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 a small story, my girlfriend has been waiting five and a half years to be put on a transplant, a tra transplant list. Mm. And she called me at work the other day and I knew something, something had to be wrong for her to call me in the middle of the day. And I have to tell you, I was so excited for her because it's so important for people to be an organ donor. And yes. we just, I, I just recently found out that our very own Al B. Shore just had a liver transplant this summer. Mm. Wow. And, and I think it, 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 it's for me, I never wanted to be an organ transplant, uh, an organ donor. And I, I didn't want to do that because 
because I had a cousin of mine die at, I think he was 17 years old. And I remember for that whole week, okay, that they had to release him of all, all the meds that were in his body. And it prolonged my cousin's, you know, sadness. Mm -hmm. And I said, oh, I'm never going to be an organ donor. I could never do this to my family. But I didn't realize I was so young. I didn't understand the importance of being an organ donor. And she's on the list and I'm, I'm so excited for her. And I, I appreciate her even listening tonight, but that's my girl from grammar school. <laughs> Yeah, it's been a couple of, you know, it's been interesting. People, you know, we all living longer and people live, people are living longer. And uh, I was at a reunion last week. I guess it started with uh, individuals who graduated from Pennington, right. you know, so they all elementary school and they end up graduating in 75 and 76. And uh, I was invited to it and it was you know about 100 people there from Trap Hagen, Holmes, wow. all knew each other from elementary school. And then some of us knew each other because we graduated from Mount Vernon High School. So, uh, yeah, I mean, friendship is, you know, just think about the power, you know, of Mount Vernon. Many of us don't know who our elementary school's friends are right. or where they are right now, <laughs> you know. So if you got an elementary school friend, right, and I remember, uh, you know, uh, Tree saying, uh, she's in contact with somebody that was in elementary school um, when she was there wow. and, and they reconnected. So, Hey, if you got people, you know, that's in elementary school and you, you still know them. <laughs> you, you, oh, Lowe's. I have my best friend from is from kindergarten. Wow. And every year, every year I spend Thanksgiving with her, which we just got back from Vermont. We rented uh, a house in Vermont <laughs> with all our kids. So, oh man, that's I have good. my best friend since kindergarten, Margaret. Awesome, yeah. Well, it looked like we got off to a good start here, but uh, we want to get to know, want to get to know Caitlin. That. <laughs> yeah, so we we want to talk about it. Uh, you know, talk, you know, because one of the important things I like to have on the blueprint is for people to get to get known. And uh, sometimes people do interviews, you don't know who they are. Oh, nice interview. And, you know, they had some success and they their business or whatever they, they're doing, but they don't get to know the person. So if you can just share with us, because there's three important things, you know, that I like to, to discuss. And that's the importance of family and 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 you being Born, I wasn't born and raised here, but you were born and raised here. And that's a privilege, you know, yes. uh, to be born and raised in, in Mount Vernon. And I was thinking of it. I was thinking today earlier when I said, oh, man, Caitlin's been born and raised in Mount Vernon. And, th and then I started to think as I was sitting there, I came to Mount Vernon when I was five. Right now, I don't remember anything below that. OK. Right. So the reality of it is, as far as I'm concerned, I was I'm here, I'm born in Mount Vernon because that's all I remember is Mount Vernon. <laughs> you know, in order to remember North Carolina below five years old, I got to go look at a picture. <laughs> you know, and it, then it got a little morbid, too. It got a little bit a little morbid. I was like thinking like I'm hanging out with my grandchildren right now. You know, if something happened to me, man, you mean tell me they ain't gonna remember me? What is that? Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, I'll tell you. I'll tell you a funny story. My my mother died when my daughter was three, mm -hmm. and my daughter remembers everything about her. Yeah, it's amazing. It's amazing because <laughs> I say, I say, how do you remember that? She goes, it's, it's just incredible. I think my daughter's an old soul to begin with. Anyway, yeah, I think the same thing too. We tr but we plan on being here a long time. So I'm oh, I'm, yes. I'm using my mom as a model. You know, she's seeing she's seeing God grand she's seeing her kids, the grandkids, and the great grandkids. Okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah, that's the model right there. You know, that's but, awesome. But talk about and you know, because of course your your dad was a public servant and fireman. Um, yep. you know, and 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 so talk about them and you know, talk about what they instilled in you and, and uh, bring us current. Oh, so born and raised in Mount Vernon. Um, we went to St. Peter and Paul school uh, over on uh, Birch Street. 
Then uh, we left there and went to Immaculate Conception in Tuckahoe. And then from there, my mother used the excuse that she didn't want to drive to too many schools, which I know <laughs> was a joke. Now that I'm an adult, because why would anybody put that burden of the, the tuition? Um, I ended up at uh, the Ursuline School in Nourishell from seventh grade to high school. And then I went to Iona College. Uh, I met my husband at my sister's engagement party in 1996. Yeah, 1996. And then I stalked him for three months because <laughs> he was traveling the world. <laughs> and uh, him and I finally went out on uh, St. Patrick's Day on a double date with uh, my sister and her fiance at the time. Well, at the time, ended up being her husband. And uh, I never forget Roberto, my husband, Roberto, who's also a public servant. He's a retired Mount Vernon detective. Um, he asked my mother, she, she said, oh, do you want to have some corned beef? And he said, well, do you have any Italian bread? And my mother was like, who is this guy? Corned <laughs> 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 <More> beef <laughs> on Italian bread? <laughs> it's funny, you know, and, uh, you know, we started dating and then, uh, we got married in 2000. Yeah. 2000. And, uh, we had a very, very good time. You know, we traveled the world till 2005 when I got pregnant with my daughter, Sophia. Uh, unfortunately, both my mother, then my sister, and then my uh, father passed away. All three passed away from cancer. But, mm. you know, and that actually is how I met Patrice. Because mm. Patrice's mother was in one room at Calvary, and my dad was in the other. So Ernie, who was both your mother-in-law and my father's best friend, he was traveling between uh, hospital rooms. And mm. I never forget that because it was such a difficult time for Ernie. But that's how I met Patrice. Wow. You know, I remember that, but I, I didn't remember. I, rem I remember that she was going back and forth. Uh, Patrice was. Mm -hmm. I didn't really know um, who she was going to see or, you know, what was happening. I knew something was happening because I knew Ernie was in. He came over. Yeah. And and then he was leaving, right? So, yeah, that, that's she, she, this. Her this and I like, are forever connected. We're forever. Yeah, yeah. I was, she just wrote that forever connected. I, I get connected. it now. I get it. I get it. I mean, there, yeah. there's dozens of uh, uh, stories I could tell you about my parents. I could tell you that, you know, I love a rainy day, and I love a rainy day because I remember the comfort of my mother, her making something in the kitchen. She was an incredible cook. Uh, she, she taught us so much. I mean, she, she had incredible style. She was one of the kindest people you would ever meet, but don't cross her. If you cross <laughs> her, she, 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 uh, she had that Irish temper. <laughs> yeah. You know, and my, my father was always a provider. My father was the quiet, quiet giant in our house. The, you know, Always one to lend a hand. I can't tell you how many strays, as my mother would call them, that my dad would take in. Anybody who, who you know, had an issue, whatever. My father always, my mother and father always counseled people. We always had somebody that needed a place to stay or a sister's friend who was a nanny that ended up living with us, who, who was an unbelievably great influence on us, Jerry. She was uh, uh, a girl from... Oh, I want to say Cleveland. I hope I don't get that wrong. But she was she was incredible, a credible influence on me because she was very religious. Right. I have a very strong faith. Um, but I'm not I, I wouldn't say like I'm not a holy roller, but I have a very strong faith because I feel like I could never get through anything if I didn't have a relationship with God. And, you know. When you're in your 20s, you don't acknowledge that. And even a friend of mine just came out on Facebook the other day and what courage he took to say that he's got a, a renewed relationship with God. I was so inspired by that because 
nobody says that anymore. And you shouldn't be embarrassed be, that you have a relationship with God or that you have faith. I mean, I couldn't have gotten through any, I feel like the deaths of my mother, my sister, and my father, other people could really take it and, and, and just go down deep into a depression over it. But for me, I felt like when they passed, each of them was an angel for my brother's two kids and my daughter. So that's how I was able to compensate for their passing, right? Because I felt like, oh, how lucky I was that each of them have, have an angel up in heaven to watch over them. Hmm. So their influence, their strength through illness is it, just incredible. So I feel like I could do anything. If they could get, if they could do what they did through being sick and dying, you know, I could do anything. <laughs> You got some uh, little messages down there. Oh, yeah. I see that, Trusty Marable. <laughs> I think I remember you telling me that story. <laughs> yeah. And, um, you know, I don't know. I'm trying to think. Your mother looks so familiar. When I was looking at the picture, I was like, man, I seen, like, I seen her a bunch of times, but I just can't remember where. I almost said she looked like one of my teachers. But, um, yeah, I, and your your dad, I'm sure. I mean, I don't know if he was part of one of the uh, one of the clubs like um, uh, Kiwanis or Rotary. I think Rotary. I I used to be a Rotarian. I mean, you, you know, know we're you know they're bringing the Rotary back. They Rose. are. Oh, they're okay. okay. The Rotary back. I even <laughs> think that there's a meeting this week. I have to look it up. Yeah, I, I used to I used to go over there and you know they kind of got older, you know. I when I came I was younger, so everybody was older. I mean, and and I was like they were trying to re a resurgent right, you know, of it. And you could see the old regime. And I, I remember as a as a kid in a boys' club, uh, we used to have to dress up. Boys club gave us a pair of pants, nice pair of pants, and a jacket. And it had our Torch Club, Boys and Girls Club emblem on it. And we used to have to go. Um, we used to have to go to the to the um, Rotary Club meetings and talk about the club. We used, we used to have to go to the Qantas Club, the Lions Club. Yeah. You used, used to have to go visit those places as a little kid. And you meet, you know. Um, and, I, and I think I wasn't uh, the, I think I was the, we used to have these uh, for learning to vote in the club. We used to have voting in the club, uh, you know, and we have to learn how to, uh, you know, in the future, learn how to vote and vote for different people and learn how to run for different things. And I ran for the commissioner of recreation one time and you get to, you know, go for a day, take off from school, go for a day and I hang out and, and hang out. And I think you will see a picture of Denzel uh, where he became the police commission, the police commissioner for a day. And then we <laughs> had a number of kids that were, were had to go to the fire station and, and hang out with the, the day with the, um, with the fire commissioner, you know? So yeah, th those were good times back then. Okay, Danielle talking about, Rotary. Yes, the Rotary meeting is tomorrow at Luciata's at 5.30. <laughs> yeah. So anybody who wants to get involved should get involved because we can't keep talking about changing the culture unless we're going to get involved. Danielle, myself, and Lisa are actually having a, a fundraiser for uh, the Mount Vernon Youth Basketball Association on Tuesday for the girls team because, you know, girls teams are notoriously underfunded sometimes. So we want to bring more awareness to that. So Tuesday night at Maggie's at 6 p.m., we're doing a uh, a fundraiser fundraiser for the elementary school girls basketball team. Oh yeah! Oh, you see, there's Miss Myers. Hi, Nana. Oh, what's up, man? Love you, Nana. I I miss going over to uh, um, the Dole Center. Yeah. You know, I should just go over there. I'm tired see. now. I know. You know, it's I used to go. Really I used to go over there and just say hello. Just stop in and say hello. You know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was good yeah, times. That that woman is an example of paying it forward, right there. 
Eula, Eula Myers has had such a uh, tragedy losing her, some of her children, you know, mm -hmm. and it, it's, she is always willing to take somebody under her wing and help them. And she's done it to so many countless people that are my age now. When they were running around and 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 doing what they weren't supposed to be doing, and she had no problem taking them, and and setting them straight and giving them a future, however they however they could do it. Yeah, Mrs. Myers, I, and you know what? Let me tell you something. No matter what, right? No matter what, if you walk into those center, you see Mrs. Myers. She always has a smile on her face. Always. <laughs> Always had a smile. He's an inspiration. I mean, yeah, without a doubt. Yeah, without a doubt. Yeah, very encouraging. You know, um, you know, some some people would be very sad, but she, man, she has a a lovely spirit. She know? really does. Her yeah. and her and uh, her and uh, Papa Myers, Cliff Myers. Yeah, they're the best. I talked to him the other day. <laughs> And I have to, I have to take Sophie to go see them because uh, they come to, they came to watch one of her softball games, and it was so, so cute. She, so cute. Oh yeah. So talk to us a little bit about uh, the softball player. Where's she, uh, where, where is she at now? She's at where? where well, she's at, she's at the Ursuline School in Nershaw. Okay. She. She uh, looked like she know what she's doing there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> she's a catcher. And uh, she's applying to colleges. She's a senior. It's a very stressful time for me, Lowe's. <laughs> oh, man. Now, Trees put up there. Oh, that, the puppy. That, that was going to be my curiosity question. That's a, You said that's a puppy. That's my baby, Logan. Yeah. I was like, what's up with the dog? I mean, <laughs> I was looking at some pictures. Okay, so I have to tell the story of the dog. Okay. <laughs> so I would say now it's probably 13 years ago. We, we lost our Mastiff. We had an English Mastiff, and his name was Briscoe. My, my husband never wanted Briscoe to begin with. I had to hide him in the basement when I first got him. Okay? <laughs> Imagine that. He sounds like me. Yeah. So fast forward, for all those 12 years, I asked for another dog, asked for another dog, asked for another dog. Well, all of a sudden, this dog comes across my screen and the rescue, I was never going to purchase another dog. That's not a puppy. Yes, it is a puppy. <laughs> so It's a grown puppy. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Councilwoman Copeland's on there. Uh, who's up, running Lisa? for re-election for 2023. What's up, Lisa? So, um, so this beautiful dog comes across my screen, and he's almost a twin to Briscoe. Wow. So I started emailing the dog rescue and I, I CC'd my husband on it. And then uh, Sergeant Wookie from the Mount Vernon Police Department, I called him because I knew he had gotten three dogs from this dog rescue. Very difficult to adopt a dog. Okay. Some of, some of the rescues are very, very strict. I had to take pictures of every room, the backyard fenced in, everything. So I call up Sergeant Wookie. He might be a lieutenant now, but I call him up and I said, you have to call them. I have to have this dog. I have to have this dog. <laughs> so he says, okay, okay, okay. Night before my husband says, I don't want a dog. My daughter sits there crying. I said, well, we're getting this dog. And now my husband takes selfies of the dog. Look at, <laughs> look at how handsome. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I see. And that's not a, well, it may be a puppy. It's a big puppy. Either bit. Well, they told me he was going to be 60 pounds and he wasn't going to shed. He's up to 95 now. Dang. I see him standing up on people's shoulders. Oh, yeah. I mean, woo. So what he does when you walk in the house is some people call it jumping. He likes to hug. And he will pull you. See what he's doing in the upper right-hand corner there to the right down? My girlfriend, Ruby, he's hugging uh -huh. her. <laughs> But okay. yeah, he, this dog is a blessing. I just love this dog. <laughs> oh man, I mean, I I love him for you. I mean, I don't want one, but I mean, I we we got a little dog at home. Know, a little, little dog. dog. <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, you know what? It's not that I don't like dogs. I just don't want to be responsible for them. Oh, I mean, you sound like Roberto. Well, you know, I, I mean, he I doesn't. Tell him I take care of kids. I, you know, I got kids 
grandkids. I don't have no time for no dog, right? Uh, <laughs> until he's until he's rubbing up on you and giving you therapy that you don't even realize you needed. No, now, now maybe there's a problem. Maybe I'll change my mind when when everybody leave the house. You know, right? You know, in the, in the, it's in the, just you and him. It's, yeah, just <laughs> me, Trees, and everybody's a move on, and they got their own little places and stuff like that. And then <laughs> you know, you feel a little lonely. Maybe. Yeah, maybe. when your grandchildren are about fourteen, fifteen. <clears throat> uh, no, because. They're gonna be doing something. We're gonna be playing sports or something, and I'm and I'm gonna be there not watching the dog. <laughs> so, oh man! <laughs> oh, look at my Tracy say, "No, you won't, Lowe's. <laughs> I know I won't. So, uh, so in in and, and uh, talk about some of the things you know, and because I love it when you talk about paying it forward um, on the. Well, it may be something before the the library, but um, you was on the the board of the library, yeah, right, and and you're president of the um, soup kitchen, soup kitchen, and and you're on the board of YCOP, I think it is. I was was former. on the board of y, former board member of YCOP. Yeah, that's civil engagement. That's community service. <laughs> uh, the only reason I'm I'm a former member is only because I I when I join an organization, I want to make sure that I have enough time to be able to dedicate to it. And if I don't have the time to dedicate to it, I can't. I I, I mean, they I would say if if you want to me to loan my name, if that helps your organization, by all means. But understand that I can't do this, that, and the other. You know. Mm -hmm. So and. Obviously, the soup kitchen is at the top of everything uh, for me when it comes to uh, giving back to the community because there's definitely a need here for it. Well, yeah, I, I think sometimes uh, we, we could be a jack of all trades and a master of none. Absolutely. You know, and if you spread yourself too thin, then nobody gets blessed. Right. You know, so it's it's always good to pick out that. And I don't know if you knew this is not the boys, not the Boys and Girls Club of Mount Vernon. But the National Boys and Girls Club, you can only serve if you're going to be a board member on the national. You can only serve on that board. Oh, right. See, that's great. Yeah, because I mean, you put put all your energy into it. You know. Well, you know what the thing is also, Lowe's, that I find that sometimes people are not um, genuine when when they uh, get onto boards. Sometimes they're just trying to build a resume and not really make a difference. And I'm not embarrassed to say that because there are people out there that do that. I happen not to be one of them. You know, I enjoy, I enjoy, get, I try to help YCOP as much as I can going to whatever, whatever they have, because I, I saw that program start from nothing. Okay. Mm -hmm. When, um, you know, Henry Wilson came in and was working with Alan Ayers, you know, to, to, because it really was Alan's organization that he right. started mm -hmm. that Henry and Alan and, and the rest of the board built up to an incredible, you know, organization that does so much. They have camp, they have after school, you know, I, I, they, they, uh, in that church also, you, you have basketball that, uh, coach Murray and, uh, Michael Garrett are running their teams out of first Presbyterian, you know, so there, that organization is an example of changing a culture, doing kindness they, they don't just do for themselves. If they see that, that something is missing in the community, Henry will do a food drive, okay? If he sees that kids are cold, he'll do a coat drive. I mean, it, it, it's incredible because he's a blessing to this community because he understands what it's like to build something from the ground up. Mm-hmm. You know, you you understand that too, Lowe's, because as far as I'm concerned, and I've told you this, and I'll say it out loud, the Boys and, Club, Boys and Girls Club of Mount Vernon would not be what it is today if it wasn't for Lowe's Moore, plain and simple. Well, I appreciate that. Well, yeah. You know how I feel about that, so. Yeah, and I, I know that I've been um, invited. Um, uh, I think they're building a, a basketball program uh, at Wyckoff. And hopefully in the new year, you know, I'll get a chance to get down there. And, and uh, you know, I had gotten a call from them about coming down and to speak to some of the kids and, and, and uh, maybe do something down there. I see Vinny 
Vinny is a board member at YCOP. Yeah, Vinny's a board member. And uh, one of my favorite all-time um, club member, members of the club alumnus, Kevin Bunch. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I remember Kevin when he was a young guy at, at the club as well. And he's on the board down there. So, uh, yeah, awesome. So I, I just wanted to say one thing because I, I think that you're so humble sometimes that you don't you don't speak about some of the great things that you're doing, like with the King movement. Well, yeah, I mean, I'll you know, look, you know, you love Mount Vernon, but you love people. And and um, you know, I was always driven um because somebody helped me. And when it was just the boys' club. Right. I, I just remember distinctly so many, so many um, men that were at the boys club who weren't getting paid and they were volunteer coaching and they were vol they would just come to the club. Right. And and they they would be there, you right. know, and you would see men all over the community, you know, giving back. And and I said, OK, that's the kind of person I want to be when I grow up. You know, I see they were the lights right for us so that we could see and then one of the major thing for the boys club was the torch right it, it had the boys club and then they had the torch in the middle and and a lot of alumnus would say who's going to pick up that torch you know when right. uh, billy thomas is not there mr jones is not there somebody has to pick up the torch right right and uh you know gentlemen like um like henry has picking has picked up the torch. He did from, from Alan Ayers. Yeah. And, and 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 Mr. Ayers and I used to sit in many of meetings in recreation department meetings and collaboration meetings and address the soul. Yeah. And you know the struggle for our agencies for YCOP for the Boys and Girls Club when I first came in was a, was a tremendous struggle. Right. Because and, they weren't established. And, and to get them up and going, I mean, I remember so many disappointments because I think at that time, Donna Jackson was serving as the president. I was serving as the vice president. And sometimes as a board member, you have to be a cheerleader, hmm. you know, and you have to keep encouraging, you know, when, I mean, he was, Henry was so inspirational the first time I sat down and talked to him that I was like, how could I not do this? You know, it was something that I really felt like was going to take off because he was so organized and how he wanted, he had a vision that was, that, that was incredible, mm -hmm. you know? And then I thought to myself, well, okay, so you have Y Cop and you have the Boys and Girls Club. And I always remember comparing the two, but they were starkly different, you know, but um, to see it grow in, I remember the first summer he did the camp, there were 20 kids, I mm. think. That, I, I mean, Kevin Bunch or Vinny, maybe you guys can weigh in here and tell, tell us how many uh, they're up to now. But I know they've got an incredible after school program because my tenants' kids are um, over there at YCOP. And I, I told her, listen, you want an affordable, safe program? This is where you need to go. And she awesome. did, which I was happy about. Yeah. And, and you know, with Mr. Ayers, it was the one thing when you were, when you were a police officer. Right. When when you're a police officer, there's a certain amount of discipline and structure, you know, because I remember being a part of the PAL. Yeah. You know, the police athletic league and a lot of the police officers volunteered and were part of boxing and all the different things that was going on there. And we don't have a whole lot of places like that. So it's important to have places like the Boys and Girls Club. And it's also important to have YCOP. We actually don't have enough when it comes to after school uh, programs, we don't have a whole lot. And then you got, you know, now you're trying to, and you got recreation department, you know, that. Well, we also, you know, one thing we also need is people to step up. We need people to step up. We need people to not look to get paid, but maybe pay their soul and, and volunteer and help out. Like, you know, Lisa, Danielle and I are doing this fundraiser on Tuesday and we're doing it because we need people to understand that there are really good things going on in this community that you can join and be a part of. We need that village to start up again. What you and I grew up with, you couldn't go down the street without Mr. Malagero or Mr. Uh -oh. DeLeo or, 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 
you know, the Heinz, anybody saying, hey, what are you doing? You're doing something wrong and then pulling you and taking you home. You know, like we need to get back to that village mentality. And I, I said this over and over the past two years because I've seen so many things go so far south because our village is not talking to one another. OK, mm. and we need more people to get involved, volunteer, start something you start it, We'll support it. You know, let us know about it so that we can draw resources into those programs. Well, yeah. First of all, we got to we got to break this island. What I call an island mentality. Island, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Everybody's on the island to themselves. And we don't realize how important collaborations. Is. And I understand it. Right. Because. It costs money. You know, some people like to say we're competing. We're not competing, right? Every uh, program is different. Every program every is program different. Every program gives something different. That's right. It's and just, I, I'm just tired of the same five people getting involved and no, nobody, like I drag people. I, I kind of pull them from every which way. I even said to you that day, oh, when are you going to start coaching again? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I didn't say you I was going to start coaching, but... uh. Well, Listen, at whatever <laughs> capacity you do, it's a blessing, right? I remember growing up when St. Ursula would have the dances, okay? The ICA mm. would have the dances. You had basketball. Bobby Semino, from the time I was 12, 13 years old, you know, he, he's been coaching. Dwayne Murray's been coaching. Michael Garrett's been coaching. You know, you've always been mentoring and helping wherever, wherever you can, you know, wherever you can give. And mm -hmm. I, I would just love for everybody to come back together and, you know, let's support what we have, right? And let's just make what we have better and build up, you know, the, the registration, the registrants for these programs and make sure that people understand where they are. They're in a safe environment, whether it be the Boys and Girls Club, YCOP, uh, you know, after school activities at, at the school district, you know, we, we just have to get back to that village mentality. Yeah. I, th I think that's going to be, um, important going forward. You know, it's, it's good that we got Memorial field back. Um, yes. cause they used to have like a, a, remember they used to have the little Olympics down there through the yeah. recreation department, you know, uh, the club would bring hits, uh, organizations, uh, it the club and all the different organizations, the YMCA used to get together and we saw them beat down there, compete, run track and kick a ball or whatever, you know, it would just bring us together. And, and yeah, we should talk. I mean, I'm, I know I'm working on, you know, I was able to accomplish a number of things at the boys and girls club and I'm working on, uh, doing some online stuff around youth, the old, what I call the overview of youth development. I mean, because, when I first came in the Boys and Girls Club, and it's unfortunately that in neighborhoods like Mount Vernon uh, that are struggling financially, um, you know, we don't always get the best. Right. right? And and so, like but you we say, we, 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 we like can, you, if we have a voice and if we have a strong voice, mm -hmm. we can demand the best. And right. that, that that's something that we have to like like we were talking earlier, change the culture. We mm -hmm. have to know that we're worth it to demand the best. Okay. Oh. And, and I hear the mayor say this on a regular basis. We're worth it. Oh yeah. Without a it's doubt. It's not a new idea. If, if Scarsdale has it, Mount Vernon can have it also. It's just a matter of us having the right people in place to demand it. We would have never gotten $150 million from New York state. If it wasn't the mayor hounding, Everybody from the federal government to New York state, we are worth every dime that comes into this community. Okay. And we're here to make sure that it's spent properly and that the organizations that are really out there doing the work, get the monies that they are entitled to have. It's really important for us to understand that we're worth it. We demand, we have to demand better. Yeah. Without a doubt. Yeah, I, I agree. With you. I agree with you 100 percent. Yeah. And and we also have to be able to. There's got to be a time where we know we have to work on our own organizations. Absolutely. Right. But we also have to know that there's importance like of partnership, like, you know, the soup you mentioned earlier, one of one of my good friends, uh, Pastor B. Joy, I mean, who's 
with me in the King movement, right? So he's a part of the King organization for Westchester. And we do a number of different things together. So to hear that you guys, the soup kitchen is in, in, in his church, this is not a surprise. Yeah. You know, because his he's a giving person. Right. You know, he he's a kind person. And those kinds of working together can is what we really need. You know, yeah. we, we need to start of, you know, really coming together and working on some stuff. We we have some really great organizations like that happened by a simple conversation that I had with um I think actually Oscar Davis had shared a post, I believe, on Facebook and had a conversation. It's really, really because of Oscar that um, made the connection between uh, Pastor Bajoy and and myself. And then Roberta went, uh, Roberta Puzo, who, you mm -hmm. know, one of the questions you asked me, who who has influenced me outside my family, definitely Roberta Apuzo. Mm. I mean, she she is uh, probably uh, one of the strongest. A go-getter. Yeah. And, and she is not embarrassed to go get it. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And, yeah. and you have to be, you know, I never forget, you know, people saying to me, oh, she runs it like it's her own. Well, it, isn't that, isn't that what you want? Somebody to run it like they care, like it's their own home. That that's how I feel about it. That's how that when we served on, on the library board. Yes. Yes. We, we, we felt like that was ours. It's a part of our community and we value it. So we make sure that everybody would be on top of their game. Right. That's how Roberta works. Also, you know, She's counseled people. She's found people housing. She feeds people through the pandemic. I remember a community member said, how, how, you know, how can I get food? The soup kitchen's closed. I said, no problem. Somebody's out of work, went down to the soup kitchen at night, filled up grocery bags of, you know, whatever we, we could get because sometimes people donate to the soup kitchen, but we can't really so use gotta, like small cans. We need big, <laughs> you we, know, so we got a volunteer right there. All right, I love it. Oh, yeah, reach out, reach out. <laughs> yeah, um, and and it and it was like my club, you know. Is it's, right. It's you your, know, when you when take ownership, if you're taking, if you're taking, and this is why I, I, the library meant so much to me. I took so much of my personal time away from my family, and donated it to the library because I believed in the mission of the library, and I still believe in it. There's so many things that this community could utilize that library for, okay? Like we can start to change the culture, having the right things at the library and making sure that we put pressure on that administration to make sure that they do, you know, a whole diverse programming around every culture. We have 92, 90, 92 different nationalities here in the city of Mount Vernon, mm -hmm. right? So, us taking something like that and treating it as our own, you know that we love it, right? Mm -hmm. Just like you, Lowe's. Like, for me, the boys, and I said it before, for me, the Boys and Girls Club will always be Lowe's more, plain and simple. <laughs> you built yeah. that board, you built that program, and as it excels, it, it, it will always be your legacy. Oh, I appreciate that. Thank you. And, yeah, you're, you're, you're right. Like, um... Uh, you know, when you, when you think about, you know, I always think about everywhere that I worked, e even before I, I knew what work was, <laughs> I mean, that, that was the one thing when I was a, a little kid working for the club and I was a junior counselor. I mean, I literally took that seriously. I mean, okay, these are, you know, they give me a group of kids, you know, two or three kids. These are my kids, right? right? I'm responsible for those kids came a senior counsel. They gave me 10 kids. You know, I was responsible for those kids and to make sure that those kids had a good time. Right. And, and so when you, when you get on a board, if I got to get on a board, I got to take on it. It's the, you know, that's my organization, right? You know, that's my boys and girls club. I mean, you got to take ownership. Right. And, and that's the only way it works. You can't go on there. Like you said earlier, some people just build on the resume, you know, uh, no, your resume get built when you do something. Right. And <laughs> it goes to it goes to that poem, The Dash. What will they say about you? What will they say? What it comes in between those two dates? That dash, what does it mean to you? And uh, you know, 
it's very important for me. One of the things that my parents instilled in us is whatever blessings you have, you make sure you give them to others, mm. you know, and it will always come back to you. And it does, it does always. And it's really a mindset, you know, you, you could get knocked down, but you have to always remember to pick yourself back up. Plain yeah. and simple. Let it happen for like two minutes. Feel bad for yourself. Get your ass back up. Sorry. <laughs> hey, yeah. hey, you gotta say it. You gotta you just you gotta say it like it is, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes it's the only time people hear. Uh, right. And, and yeah, but um Viviana was saying thanks for your support. Um, oh God, yeah, I love of the military. I Better. love Viviana and I'm happy New York state Scott Viviana, but I was not happy to, to lose the, the, she's such a loving person that our veterans were so lucky to have her lead that agency here in the city of Mount Vernon. She's still helping though. Yeah. We love her. Yeah. She, yeah. I mean, sometimes man, you, when people move on, it becomes a blessing for you. You know, hopefully you can find somebody to replace her with the same spirit. Right. You know, who will take like Viviana take an ownership. She took ownership. They were her babies. You know, yeah, yeah. Those I mean, veterans, she treated them like they were her child. She loved them so much and she was so gentle and kind with them and 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 helped them find what they really needed. Yeah. And um, you know, as we come in. Uh, to a close, I want to talk a little bit about, you know, you, you journeyed to this civil engagement and community service, all these wonderful things. And then now you, you, you're in the biggest, <laughs> I think the, the next step, I really just kept growing. Right. You know, of course you, you, the soup kitchen is going to be your baby and will be your baby oh. forever. Mm -hmm. Right. But um, you're in very important space right now and, and that's the city council yes yeah and and so um i don't know for everybody out there but for me you know i've been stressed <laughs> can i say it again i've been stressed for about 10 or 15 years you know because we just seemed like we couldn't get on the the same page but it at this point it looks like three branches yes are supposed to work in unison yes and it and it finally you know the noise is it's quiet yes and and seem like the three branches are working uh together what do you see in regards to that and and the future of our city so um it's not that we don't disagree we definitely have uh passionate conversations we just don't air it out in public. We have the, we, you know, negotiate, collaborate, uh, do whatever we need to do to move the city forward. Uh, I think it's really important. Uh, like I said earlier, I love working with um, Councilwoman Copeland, who's running for re-election next year. Councilman uh, Derek Thompson, who's running for re-election next year. Danielle uh, Brown and Ed Poteet, council people. Uh, I love working with them because each one brings a different skill set to the table. And we have some really great conversations. Uh, you know, we don't know everything. And it's not to say that, um, like I said, past administrations had a lot of distractions. Some, some were not their fault, right? So I think it was very hard for anybody to excel in that. Uh, I think we're starting from the ground up right now. I think Comptroller Morton's doing... Uh, a great job digging through a lot of paperwork that, you know, some paperwork was not recorded and finding checks and, you know, reaching out to people and, you know, some people overpaid getting refunds back and, you know, and that goes with, with, with the, uh, with the job, you know, uh, I think uh, people are very quick to want to, uh, Oh, I'm going to support uh, another mayor rather than sit down and have a conversation with this mayor if you have an issue or or, or you need to have something fixed or you're unhappy about something it, you know it really it's about the community you know it, it's about making everything conducive to being able to raise your family here 
live here and be, be a productive member of, of society. And the only way to do that is really everybody working together. Working together does not equal rubber stamping. OK, working together just means that you have an, the emotional intelligence to sit down at a table, have constructive conversations and come up with constructive solutions to help our city. Now, do we need more revenue in the city? Absolutely, we do. Do we know all the right moves? No, we're going to make mistakes that, you know, that happens. You know, we're very lucky uh, to have Councilwoman uh, Lisa Copeland on, on city council with us because she does help us to guide us, uh, you know, um, logistically, you know, mm -hmm. historically she's got, she's got the most knowledge after being the city clerk for so many years. Uh, also, you know, we have uh, Donna Jackson as our deputy clerk. We have Tanisha Walters as our clerk. We have an incredible office in the uh, city clerk's office. And, you know, now we're coming into budget season, right? So this is uh, crunch time. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, we're, we're going to be uh, sitting down and going over that. I mean, that's really the mayor's administration that puts together uh, the budget. And we'll see where we're at. Yeah. You know? Well, yeah, that's one of my one of my, one thing about sports. Uh, one of my specialties is that. You know, I, I've probably been, well, I'm not going to say probably. I've been successful at every level as an athlete. And people just see you playing basketball. You know, you watch you on television. Um, they see you possibly doing great exploits, right? And, um, and, and the thing is, is that they don't see the inner workings or the behind the scene work that go that goes with building teams right right and and building teams that is such right. an important that is such an important word team you yes. cannot do anything yourself you just can't whether you whether you're a couple and you're married right you need the other person always it's somebody that balances you that's a team your yeah. family is a team where you work is a team we're working as a team to, to build this community and, and we are doing it. It's, yeah. it's taking a little time, but we are doing it and changing administrations is not the route to go. You work with what we have and, and work as a team to move it forward. Oh yeah. And then the other thing is, man, we, we, you know, I've been on teams. I'm most of the teams I've been on, we've been successful. Now I, a lot of people didn't like me. I probably didn't like them either. Um, and I've probably been on teams where the coach probably didn't like me and I probably didn't like him either, but I mean, but they are common goals, common you goals. know, and the common goals was to win. And, and most of us become selfless if we want to win. Right. And we accept our roles and responsibilities because the bottom line is if we don't win, nobody wins. Right. This you community know? won't win. no. <laughs> we will not win. No. And, and so when we, you know, it, it was a great book out uh, talking about um, get on the bus, right. You know, you got to get, you got to get the right people on the bus and the right seat on the bus. <laughs> right. And, 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 and so if you want to be successful, you want to win, right. That's in everything. Right. Cause we got all these parts that will become a whole. Right. And I love that movie. What, what's that? What's that movie with one one band, one sound. Right. Yeah. Right. Uh, and and drum lines, so one band, one sound. Yeah. Right? And that's what we're looking for. You know, particularly in the city of Mount Vernon, one band, one sound. Right. All of us working together. And, um, you know, you can't be successful unless you do that. Right. You know, and but at least I could say this. You know, I like peace, right? I like quiet, right? And I do too. <laughs> yeah. And people screaming and yelling don't always get things solved. Right. But like you said, if 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 you're getting behind behind the scenes and you work this thing out, because no, we're not gonna all disagree. Right. 
and um, you know, you you find out who's gonna leave, and you find out. I, I, I'll I'll say this uh, quick. The other day, and I know we were about to run over a little time, but I wanted to say this. I was at the basketball game, and everybody know Lonnie Webb, right? <laughs> Yeah, so Lonnie, he's not taking pictures and stuff. So we watching the scrimmage, but he said something that was so important during the time, right? And I was like, you know, Lonnie, he 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 was like one hundred percent. Look, I when I came up at the high school team, and he said I had uh, James Gibbs on my team, Bug Eye, and all these different people on my team, right? I wasn't getting the ball, right? He said, but I wasn't expecting to get the ball because. I was a role player, right? He said, and I played my role. Played my role. Right? And some people think they the the man, and they really the role player. You know, and you have to accept your role. You have to accept who you you are. Or if you want to be the man, right, then you got to start at, you got to start at whatever you're at, and then you got to become the man. Right. Not everybody becomes a man. But so. you always remain humble. And that, that I think, is really what's really important is that you really have to take ego out of any job that you have because you're not able to work with an ego. You could be confident, but an ego is so negative to me. You always, No matter what level of life you're at, you always have to remain humble. And, and I get that. That's something that's been instilled into me through my parents, but also reiterated over and over by Ernie Davis, right? Mm -hmm. And Ernie has told me over and over, it is not about you. It's about the community. It's not about you. It's about the community. It's so embedded into my brain that every time we make a decision, I think to myself, how does this benefit? And trust me, we're not going to make a lot of friends being council people because now you can't you can't make your friends happy. You have to do what's right for the community and the city. Mm-hmm. So you're going to have people that are going to be upset with you, you know. But if it's right for the community, then we have to move forward with it. Yeah. Well, that's and that's one. that's the difficult part of doing doing this job. Yeah, you very know? difficult. Yeah, and uh, you know, somebody used to say to me all the time, "Humility precedes blessings." Yes, it does. If there's not, if there's no, if there's no humility, there could be no blessing. That is the truth. <laughs> you know, yeah, people have to be humble, man. Um, and Caitlin, this, I really enjoyed this. Uh, yeah, very insightful well, conversation. You. Yeah. Well, and, I enjoyed. You know, that was the first time you and I really got to have like a one-on-one conversation with no interruption when we were at Memorial Field, and I loved how. You are an icon in our community. I don't ever want you, you. You are one humble person that has never taken his position and been a jerk about it. Okay. Any position that you've ever held in this community and you're so well respected. And to see everybody, hey, Lowe's more. You know, I was so proud to stand next to you. <laughs> like, you know, because the other kids, they didn't know. Right. And then when they were explained who Lowe's Moore was, you know, yeah, it might have been your basketball career, but I knew so much more of what your career was for all the children in the community that you've raised up. We're very, we're so blessed. We're so blessed to have you. And I'm glad that you do this podcast and that you promote positivity. And I can't wait to see all the inspirational uh, talks that you have here within the community that you know I'm I'm going to be supporting 100% because when somebody acts positive and does the positive things and steps up, I'm always going to represent them 100%. Oh, well, thank you. I appreciate it. And we just seen the uh was the coach. Oh, uh, uh, Shamrock, he's he's yeah. he's like uh you you hey, th- he he's showing his appreciation for you uh supporting them. Yeah, you we'll know. be honoring we'll be honoring the Shamrocks as soon as your wife gets me Coach, all the information, Coach. Yeah, Bunch. Coach Munch. Yeah, 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 definitely. Yeah, so uh, Patrice has to get me the information because I think one of the things that I get um, disappointed in is that we need to support the Shamrocks 
a lot more. I mean, they they almost won a, a, a title this year. <laughs> no, I, every time I'm in town, if I can go to go to a, a you're getting it, okay, Patrice. <laughs> but those will be one of the people that uh, uh, I'm definitely going to um, honor uh, at city council because each council member gets to honor somebody, and I I'm choosing the Shamrocks as my organization because there was a rough year this year. Yeah. You had one, well, one player that had a compound fracture. You had other players that um, didn't make it down to the, the na national playoffs, I think it was. Patrice, correct me. Oh, yeah, because of the weather. Yeah, because yeah. of the weather. So, mm -hmm. you know, they, they're they an example of working through hardships. And they they definitely need to be celebrated because they were created in the memory of Shamoya McKenzie. That's right. And that's a life we can never forget. Uh, and that's, a, that's a life that changed this community. Yeah. And, and we, we should always celebrate that we have taken such a tragedy and put it into, thank you, Patrice, you know, yeah. everybody involved in the Shamrocks organization, Nadine McKenzie is at almost every single game. You know, it's really important. We, we took, a, there was a tragedy that was turned into a positive thing for young ladies, strong young women. And we should celebrate that at every level. That's right. Yeah. And it was my pleasure to uh, have, you know, to to go to the championship, to the finals and also to have Nadine there and yeah. just just to see how, the, you know, they they didn't get a really get a chance to meet them, meet her during the course of the, right. the year, like um, really spending any time with her. But it was great seeing her interact with them and become, you know, she she lost the daughter, but what the most powerful thing was it looks like she gained seven or eight daughters. Yes. You know, and she was sitting around in the stands talking with them and they having conversation with them. It was just a powerful for me. It was just just seeing it was just powerful all by itself. Yeah. And the, the one thing I also want to mention is that Nadine McKenzie always remains positive. She reminds me of a younger version of Eula Myers taking a tragedy of losing your only child. I, I, I can't imagine. And, and she still manages to be able to give back to the community through the Shamoya McKenzie foundation. You know, it's just, I, I don't, I don't know how I would react in, in that tragedy. You know, I mean, I was at the um, emergency room that night when it happened, but I was there for another reason. Roberto Apuzo was in, the room next to her. And I, I remember seeing Nadine. I never met Nadine before in my life, but I was sitting there when, when she came out I didn't know her daughter had passed away. I knew that there had been a shooting, but I didn't know. Uh, I didn't know the details of it at that point. So, mm -hmm. but that's a perfect example of taking something negative and turning it into something positive. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Well, that was hope. Yeah, thanks for tuning in, Hope. We, we appreciate you, Hope. you. Yeah, definitely, without a doubt. Um, and Caitlin, uh, our time is up, and I want to say thank you, uh, and and thank your husband for, you know, you taking the time to step away from him for a moment. <laughs> and wh what's the name of the dog? Logan. Logan. Logan gave us a, you gave us a, you so know, your time. The first too. dog was first dog was Briscoe because my mother named him because of Detective Briscoe from Law and Order and because Roberto was a detective. So when we got this dog, Roberto said, Oh, let's keep it in the family and do <laughs> Detective Logan. So <laughs> yeah. and we definitely got to get off. My wife is uh, you see uh, she put down there uh Pinkberry, that's how she gets paid. We go to Pete Berry, get some yogurt. Ooh. Uh, so 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 we're gonna head over to New Rochelle. So to just Pete one Berry's. more thing. I um if anybody listening tonight would like to donate to the soup kitchen, www.csasoupkitchen.org. Www yeah. uh, there's a donate button there. Also, YCOP Youth Community Outreach Program. Uh, reach out. You could put it on uh, in Facebook, YCOP, and it'll take you to the Facebook page and show you where you could donate there. And also Tuesday, Danielle, myself, and uh, Lisa, who's running for re-election next year, Lisa Copeland, uh, for city council. 
And um, we're going to be having a fundraiser for uh, the junior nights, the, the uh, elementary school uh, girls basketball team at Maggie's Plains, $65 ahead. And it starts at six o'clock on Tuesday. Awesome. Awesome. And Lose, again, thank you so much. You're welcome. My pleasure. And so for everybody that supports the blueprint each and every week, man, I love you guys. And thanks for tuning in. God bless you. And I say every week, if God blesses you to wake up tomorrow, make it your masterpiece. See you next week. We really hope you enjoyed this episode of Lowe's More, the Blueprint Podcast. Stay connected and follow us at our website, www.lowesmore.com. That's L-O-W-E-S-M-O-O-R-E.com. You can also join the discussion on Twitter at Lowe's More and on Facebook at Lowe's More Jr. As always, thank you for pushing your mindset towards a better reality. This concludes the most thought-provoking portion of your day. Don't forget to like and subscribe to this podcast to stay fully up to date with everything we're up to. Until next time, be kind to yourself and each other. With the eating is a joke, I ain't buying it like I'm broke. Insufficient funds for its significance.